what's going on guys welcome back today we're going to be diving into this old kenwood kx 644w and this is something that's very meaningful to me and i'm very excited about because believe it or not this exact well not this exact same one but this type is the very first kind of well i would say for me high quality cassette deck that i ever owned back in the early 90s so let's go ahead and dig into this thing and hopefully we can fix it Let's see what it takes to fix it, and uh, hopefully let's fix it. Okay, so... Don't know that you can hear that, but I can hear the motor running, probably to turn the flywheel. Nothing spins thus far. But imagine all the belts are just perished. Yeah. Hmm. So now, and I also noticed that this whole, this part of the keys here, they're kind of all messed up. Wow, yeah, see the whole thing kind of moves and uh, the eject doesn't work for this side. But I can actually show you a little bit of a trick on how to open that. Uh, kind of look at this one for a reference and figure out where the uh, little latch is for it. And kind of take a card. And I guess very much like you would do a uh, kind of carding a... <laughs> oh yeah, that is messed up. Pretty much like you would card a uh, door, you can kind of get down in there into that little clip there. But So we're going to have to check that out. We're going to, I mean that I think is going to be a big problem. But uh, other than that, probably the first thing I want to do is check out the belts. And I noticed that we have an access panel under here, which seems like it's only going to really access this part. Uh, I would imagine maybe the motor's over on this side, and uh, there's belts going over driving that uh, side A. But uh, So I think I'm going to have to take the top slash sides off and that, and then uh, actually see what's going on here. All right, and just to kind of show you that old card trick. So basically what I was doing was just using this as a reference. And see, you kind of want to maybe close it, but... Kind of just stick it in. Oh, now it's not going to do it. There we go. See, just kind of like that. There is definitely something going on. Oh, yeah. Oh, wow. This isn't wanting to open all the way. And you can see that little bar. That kind of holds all the keys. It's really kind of hard to see, but... Kind of hard to see, but it's getting caught up on that bar. This one actually works properly. I can't really give you a good look. But anyways, so these things, usually you can just kind of, yeah, there we go, kind of pop these doors up and off. And then very easy to clean. And then that gives you a little bit more a visual in there oh, okay I see you got to move it over yeah so I think this thing was dropped and uh, these this key mechanism is kind of all weird I don't know if you can see that but like the whole the whole assembly kind of moves I'm gonna stop Eject barely works. Huh. So that's going to be something I'm going to want to fix, I would imagine. Hopefully I can. If not, you know, I'm kind of content with just using the side B. Anything I'm going to re be recording is going to be coming, you know, in from auxiliary. And uh, I'm not going to be dubbing tapes. Even though if I get it working, it's got high speed dubbing and normal dubbing and Dolby noise reduction and got all the 
bells and whistles. So uh, yeah, like I was saying before, let's pop the top side cover off, slash whatever, and that bottom, and uh, let's see what we're working with. Okay, so after looking at this for about an hour, getting disappointed and uh, because I thought I was going to have to take this whole entire plate off which the uh, motor rests on, but actually you can't really see it, but there's just enough space in between that flywheel to uh, actually get some belts in there. And I grabbed a couple of belts that are uh, about the same size I measured with this floral can't really see it it's a floral wire it's for like tying up flowers and stuff and uh, so it looks like only two belts have perished let me get this back down see if we can get a good view of it seems like only two belts have perished one which goes from the flywheel up to this pulley and then one from the flywheel to the motor uh, there's a belt right there you can see which is actually still uh, excuse me. you can see is still connected it's still got a little bit of torque too I think it should be enough just to kind of see get us in the right direction now I will put on the screen they do sell multiple belt kits for this on Amazon eBay a couple different places so I'm gonna do that route but for now I'm gonna have to clean up these pulleys which let's see if we can give you a good idea. Sorry, there's cat hair sticking to the end of my tweezers. But uh, that's because, if you can see, it's really hard to do this with one hand. Okay, so right here's a piece of the belt. And see, that's, it just turns to goo. After uh, I clean it all up, I'm going to go ahead and shoot some belts in there, and let's see if we can get this thing to play a tape. Hopefully. This is going to take a long time. Okay, if you've seen Techmoan, you will know that this stuff is horrible to clean up. But, um, I think that should be good enough to just kind of test. Man, that's uh, mostly alcohol on there, the uh, liquid you see. But yeah, so uh, this is just deck two, side two, or side B, the record side. So I'm going to put these two belts on, and hopefully, now hopefully it'll work. Well, this is getting very disappointing. Uh, so side two here um, isn't working at all. It's working more than side A was. Oh, this is, I fixed that. Now it actually opens. But, um, yeah. I hit play and... Nothing really happens. I have no idea. It's something in the mechanism, I'm sure. I really don't know what's going on with it. I did change the belts in A, I changed the belts in B, didn't really get a chance to clean it up too well, because, uh, I don't know, I'm getting pretty, uh, pretty discouraged, I'm getting pretty discouraged here, so, uh, I don't know, I guess I'm just gonna keep going, take the front plate off, and, uh, see if we can make anything happen with this. <laughs> Okay, so this thing, I don't know, man. I think this thing might have been a lost cause. What I did was, this is a little cog wheel that's really easy to remove. And it is, uh, you can kind of see it right there. That's what actually goes over and uh, hits the play, uh, the take-up reel, and uh, actually moves everything. Um, this only works when I put dubbing on, see, oh, I turned it off. 
we'll see dubbing is on dubbing is off then I hit it then it starts working so uh, yeah well then we hit stop and then it keeps going so I don't know there's a bunch of stuff going on with this I don't know this one might have been a uh, not a home run this one might have been a fail but uh, probably gonna still upload this video anyways just to show you guys you know this kind of is how it is with these old cassette decks they're you know they don't they're not made this well anymore but um there's just too many little intricate pieces in these mechanisms uh for some reason see this one will go and it'll start playing but for some reason the head has to move up to you know go into position and uh it's just not doing it so it's something in the mechanism that i just can't really figure out and um yeah, I can't really, I'm not probably going to have a, uh, you know, it's not going to be worth it for me. It's kind of working. I mean, yeah, look at that. Fast forward. What if we rewind? Okay. So, yeah, I mean, you know, it's. Pause works. Yeah, I don't know. So, yeah, I don't know. I guess uh, any suggestions, any comments, uh, please let me know. Um, yeah, this one's kind of a bummer, but oh well, it goes like that sometimes. And uh, at least we're learning stuff as we go. Maybe I can still the these LEDs and still this VU meter circuit, even though I really don't need it. I think I've actually got some of those chips here. But, uh, yeah, definitely a bummer. But, uh, uh here's what it is. Okay, so I noticed something. This little spring right here was actually sticking all the way down, so that's what the problem was there. So I took, remember this was the other arm, I actually took this arm and put it over to that one, and um, the kind of vice versa, but what I did was I had a little cogwheel, which is actually too, definitely too fat to be in there, and uh, it's kind of uneven, so the the playback is a little bit off because of that. But now, honestly, because I really like this, and like I said, this is the first cassette deck I ever actually owned, you know, first decent one. And um, I'm definitely going to probably put this back together, and I'm going to switch this one back over to there so it's got the proper pulley cogwheel on it, and then just use deck A because I really don't care about recording onto tapes, to be honest with you. I just want to play back the ones I got. And honestly, the ones I got... I mean, they're all hand-me-downs, original tapes, Kiss Alive, huh? And uh, these things have just been played to death by my brother-in-law. So this should be deuce. So, oh yeah, fast forward and rewind. Oh, that works. Um, does on this one too. Everything works on this one, except for this one. We'll keep going when it's in dubbing. I don't know what's going on with all that. Oh, this one was playing for some reason. That's weird. Okay. <laughs> but yeah, so I'm, I'm pretty happy with this. I like... I mean, you can hear the wow and flutter for sure, but let's switch that one over to there and let's at least see if the speed thing goes away. And then if it's all good, then I'm going to kind of clean it up a little bit and then I throw it back together. I guess if it works well enough, we will use it for tape A. And uh, being black and being it's pretty nice on the outside, it'll go good with the denim. Oh, that's a, that's a cat laying on the denim. But uh, yeah, it should go good with it. So... Let's switch those real quick and let's see what that does. Okay, so I've just been going round and round with this thing. 
and fixing different little things we'll get in there a little bit closer i'll show you here in a minute what i had going on but so basically i changed this little cog thing and this one here i switched those back i did put a new uh little rubber o-ring kind of thing for the cog on this one and was still having problems with it i've been working with this thing for hours and i think i finally got it on both sides to actually work properly. Now, this one, since the cog wheel isn't the right size, it runs at a weird speed, and you can kind of hear that wow and flutter, but that's to be expected, and I can definitely get a new cog wheel to change that. Like I said, we'll get in there in a second, but I just wanted to show you. And I can't obviously play too long of this because it's copyrighted, but just wanted to show you. Now these are old, original. Uh, yeah, this even says 1975 on it. These are very, very old tapes. And uh, if you know anything about cassette tapes, you only get so many plays out of them. And that's a problem I'm coming along and finding oh we don't want to put that one in the problem i'm finding with a lot of my tapes that i have is they just don't sound very good minus that one actually sounds pretty good but uh okay so i think this is one that this is one that doesn't sound too great That's just a product of the tape. Doesn't have anything to do with the speed or anything. This one's perfect. This one's fine. All I gotta do is change out that cog wheel, which is kind of easy. All you gotta do is take the face plate off and then take uh, this other, another little plate off. This one to be precise. And then uh, I can change that out real easy. So real quick, I'm just gonna show you a couple of things I had to do regarding the pinch rollers. And uh, this little kind of spring there, I'll get a better camera so we can actually see what's going on in there. Okay, so real quick, the problem I was having, I don't know if we're going to be able to see it, but there's this little tiny spring that runs behind the pinch roller there. And um, that was not really as everything should be. The really good thing about this is I have two identical decks. So I could kind of look at the one that was okay, which turned out to be this one after fixing everything. And uh, started, that was the bad one, this was the good one. And just kind of went back and forth, and uh, w that was the one thing. I can't really get the greatest view of it, but uh, that little spring right there runs all the way through, and then uh, actually is supposed to go to a certain spot, a little kind of clip into that pinch roller. And uh, the other thing I was having a problem with, I forgot which one, I think it was this one, um, it wouldn't go all the way up. No, no, no. That's right. The other problem I was having was this little spring right here wasn't actually clipped on there. And I was actually getting ready to edit this video as just a complete loss. And um, I was very, very disappointed. And I was looking, and I noticed that that one didn't quite match that one. So I went ahead and fixed that, and left side worked, but uh, right side didn't. The reason, like I said, why I've been working on this is uh, this was pretty much the first cassette deck I ever owned. Uh, again, not this exact one, but kind of means a lot to me. And uh, it's going to be really cool putting it on the Denon. Uh, kind of, you know, the black on black. I think it'll look good. But yeah, man, I'm just, I'm, I'm very, very happy. And uh, just a huge weight off my shoulders. I thought this thing was going to the scrap, but it's not. It's going to go sit on top of the Denon and be part of my hi-fi. So... Let's get to it. All right, we don't want to be pushing it here. So there's side one, which actually sounds pretty good. It's just this tape that kind of sounds like this one sounded a little bit better. This one's been a little bit janky. Because like I said, I have had problems. If you see that pin troller is kind of sticking up. Mine just kind of... Yeah, 
I need to get some brand new tapes so I can test these things properly. Oh yeah, and this kind of gets stuck just a little bit. But just because of that pinch roller. I think maybe if I lube up, lube that up a little bit, I think it would be okay. But there it is all put back together. And honestly, guys, I'm actually really happy this works out for me. Man, it brings back so much memories. And uh, like I said, I don't know where I got it from, but I had one of these back in the day, and I absolutely loved it. Wish I never got rid of it, even though I would have been doing the same thing that I'm doing now, by now. Uh, those belts just turned to mush. I had black stuff literally everywhere, all over the bench and uh, all over my hands and everything. So, But now this is the real goodbye. <laughs> this is the real outro. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you have any questions, comments, concerns, go ahead and put them down there. And uh, this, I think this is a score. So have a good one, guys. Thanks.